Okay, well, we're all set here, and in this video, I'm going to try to finish three reads and show you the whole process. And um, so, anyway, I'm I'm going to test these reads so you can hear them right off the bat. So you can hear this one hardly makes a sound. That's right. That's pretty horrible, right. but we're going to fix them. We're going to fix them all. Okay, I think we're ready to go here. This is the first read that I tested, and as you remember, uh, it was uh, hard on the right side. Let's test it again. Bear with me here and I'll... Yeah, it, it was... Uh, it, it spoke a, a little better on the left side than the right side. Well, nothing new in trying to uh, improve the, the read by finishing the tip properly with the, tip, with the read finishing system. And I'm sure some of you who have the read finishing system are familiar with this process. Uh, I'm just going, to, and I'm using, actually, believe it or not, uh, I'm using two, uh, 220, uh, but it's worn 220. So I don't want to put much pressure on the read. I want the abrasive to do everything. And the first thing I'm going to do is just very, and this is very light because I'm using a heavy abrasive is um, I'm just going to just generally finish this up. Now, um, the reed played better over here than there. So uh, with that little bit that you saw, I'm going to retest this. Okay, it's a little, it's actually a little better. Now I'm going to move off to the side here and just do this again. And I'm not putting very much pressure. I'm just just holding the the tool a little firmly. That's all. And just sliding over and over. And so I want to get the tip to respond better. And you hear it does even with that little bit because the imbalance was so bad almost any kind of improvement would be a dramatic improvement. Here, that's really dramatically better. That's just from, from finishing the reed in this area. Now, I could make the reed play more responsively and everything play clearer and, uh, and you know, just uh, have a, a clearer, quicker sound and not have to blow so hard if I just leave, left the reed as it is. Uh, and just, I mean, just worked in the tip area. But I don't want to do that. I want to have a fair amount of weight in this tip area. And if I try to make the reed play really comfortably by just taking all the wood out of the, of the reed here in this area, I'm not going to get a good result. Clarence is uh, going to respond unevenly. Long pipe notes are going to have too much resistance. And the reason is because there's too much wood back here. So uh, let's mentally divide the reed into three parts. The top part in this area, that's actually just a smaller area right up there. And then the mid parts here. And then back here is the back. And here is where the culprit where there's much, much too much wood. So how are we going to remove that? Now, if you have a knife, you can use a knife, but I don't recommend it because the knives always cause problems. And the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to use very heavy abrasive. Again, this is upwards of 220, 180, and I'm going to use my finishing tool like that. I think you can see that. 
and the finishing tool is going to be taking material off right in this part of the reed okay it's it's like the finishing technique that would you would be finishing going down the reed of the tip here but we're going to do the whole thing back here and we're going to clear all this area out in the back and reeds almost every brand of reed has too much wood in the back of the reed back right back here now what happens when there's too much wood in the reed way back in the back is that it creates a great deal of resistance and and the resistance increases with the long pipe notes like bell b c and so on and so forth well as you can see i'm taking i'm being quite aggressive i'm taking quite a bit of material off all right so what that's going to do is that it's going to reduce the resistance overall so that the reed stays more open is more responsive at the tip by virtue of reducing this resistance now i'm using lighter abrasive here just to finish up all that aggressive work i did and again we're working uh we're not taking wood off in the middle per se but we're we're taking the wood off on the sides here and by and still preserving the rails you don't want to dig the rails out okay so now i'm going to turn my really uh my reed eating um uh tool here and i'm going to i'm going to do the same thing on the right side but because i'm doing it right-handed i'm going to be pulling down this area again removing area right material right in there wish i had an overhead shot but i don't so we have to live with this but again i'm removing material in the reed and remember we haven't done anything to You can see all the woods coming off there. We haven't done anything to the tip area now, or even the middle part of the reed. We're just taking a lot of material off this back area. So essentially, we're going to have we're going to have a flatter profile. It's going to and uh, it's going to be a little bit on the concave side, maybe instead of a convex or even a straight profile the straight profile reads create a lot of resistance i'm going back over here again with the um with the tool working in this area just i want to finish this up and i also want to add um, this very light abrasive here now and i'm just sort of uh refining that so uh, the surface is smoother there you go and i think I don't know if you can see or not, but uh, the reed uh, in here is um, is a pretty uh, um, well. There's a little ridge here you can see, but this has been flattened. This area has been flattened, and that area has been flattened. So now uh, let's do some testing. Okay, I'm going to move back. I don't want to blow out my mic. So here's the reed that we worked on. Now, you can hear it plays a lot better. And um, so now we're going to return back working on the tip. Uh, but we're going to balance it. As you can hear, it was hard on the left side. Now we're going to balance it so that the left side uh, actually begins to ring and uh, equally to the right side here is a place where we really need equality the reed side to side so as you can see I'm pushing down the left side of the reed 
and pushing from the corner to the center because I want more more responsiveness and more ring on the left side. What's different about this process is that uh, we didn't finish the tip area. We sort of got it generally sort of in balance, generally. And then what we did is we went back to the back to get the back more balanced out to, to uh, reduce the amount of uh, resistance and deadening that uh, too much wood in the back causes and that's going to make the reed more responsive and yet keep a generous amount of wood in that tip area. So then we go back and properly balance the reed side to side and we do so without having to take a great deal of wood off, so much wood that the tip is so weak that it starts, it stops being really overall responsive especially when you hit uh, increased resistance with the longer pipe notes, then the reed's not going to want to respond if it's too thin up here for the amount of wood that's in the back. Okay, so that's essentially uh, this process. Now, do you want to ref refine the reed a little further? Yes, you can certainly do that. And the one part of the reed we haven't talked about here is the middle third. In that middle third area, now I can use my lighter abrasive, and I can uh, I can just generally um, again pushing very evenly. And this is a lighter abrasive. I'm, I want to finish this area and make it really beautifully smooth. And um, I'm not taking so much reed off. Uh, the wood off the reed is I'm basically just polishing uh, and it's all very light and everything and we can further refine this reed um, but with the assurance that we have the proper relationship of balance not just from side to side but from tip to back That's a very responsive uh, read. And then my jaw is really down. I just seal my lips around the read. I don't have to close my jaw at all. The jaw stays down, the lips seal, and the reed speaks because it's properly balanced left to right side and tip to back. And the process we did is we basically just did a general, very light kind of finishing on the tip just to get the tip area sort of in kind of a crude left to right, side to side balance. Uh, and and to make it to be a little bit responsive and ring and then we go back and we really clarify we really get all the material out of the back of the reed and um, make that uh, make the uh, uh, make the whole reed more vibrant is basically what it does it's kind of hard to explain it's hard for me to explain it but uh, I hope it's getting through to you now we're going to take one of those really horrible reeds uh, and see what we can do. The one, ones that are, were more horrible. And I'm just going to try to leave the camera 
in a fixed position now that you've seen close up what I'm doing. This is the second read. And you hear it's very, very heavy, uh, very heavy and very hard on, uh, well, on the right ear for me, on the left there. Okay, so the, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my heavy abrasive, but I'm going to use it very lightly, and I'm just going to pull down that, that right side to make it blow a little better. I'm going to do a very, very light finishing on the tip as you can see and again I'm using a heavy a heavier abrasive here this is worn you can see it's but I'm going to use a heavier abrasive here and again I'm just um, trying to by moving over the tip I'm hitting all the high spots of the reed and uh, leveling them and then so now let's just do a general testing It's better, but as you can hear, it's pretty horrible. Now, still, uh, we're going to try to take stuff evenly off the reed, and I'm just going to hold the reed like this, and I'm going to push directly in. Again, w those of you not familiar with this method, when uh, basically the on the glass, because the glass prevents you any variation, um, when the reed goes over the glass and onto the reed, the rounded part here keeps you from damaging the tip, but what you're going to be doing is hitting all the high spots in the tip area of the reed, and this is going to make the reed tip nice and level and nice and even without having much skill, which is it's great. It's great to be able to do something that's going to be effective without having to develop years and years of skill. So, yeah, this is... Uh, uh, this is about as easy as it gets, folks. And basically all we've done here is finished the first, I don't know, maybe the first um, 10 millimeters of the tip area. And uh, you can see that makes a dramatic difference. Now, we're going to go medieval on this thing. And we're going to get rid of all that massive material back here that's creating so much resistance, making uh, it much harder to play the clarinet. So, I'm going to take my tool here, and this is our really bad stuff, real heavy stuff. And I'm going to... You can see I've got it positioned this way. And what I want to do, let me see, I don't have a pencil here. And anyway, what I want to do is I want to work right in that area. It doesn't matter, you can't see that anyway. So, but anyway, it's in all in this corner, all this wood back here in a, about the bottom fourth or fifth of the reed before just before the vamp right so I'm going to take a, a lot of material out here and as you can see I'm angling this way because I want to I want to try to level and create a flatter area right here this is much better than working with a knife because a knife uh, no matter how skilled you are you're always going to be digging and gouging you don't want to do that on reeds that really messes up the whole contour dumb idea okay so all right so all in that area i wish i had a pencil but uh but anyway um all in that area, that corner right in there, that's the material I took out. And again, um, when you use a knife and you try to do this, you really run the danger of gouging out your uh, 
side rails there, that's not a good idea. Okay, it's it's the stuff you're after is right here in this area. Okay, now I'm going to, we've flattened this out. Might be able to see that there. Again, I wish I had a multi-camera setup, but I don't. Um, so now I'm going to try to create an analogous area here on the right side of the reed, your left side. And um, again, taking less, getting, removing all the material back here. Because we want everything to ring and play well. And then we'll go and we'll work on the middle third of the reed, blending into the tip area if we need to. And with this reed, I'd say we're probably going to need to. But, as I work on this, you could do something more exciting like watch paint dry. But, if you stay with me a second, then I think we'll be able to see the effect of just working the tip area to just generally very lightly balance it and then working this back area to remove all that excess amount of wood. Um, someone told me, maybe a nasty rumor, uh, but it makes sense to me, that he really didn't care for the Van Dorn V12 reeds because of the very fact that they were too thick and they had too much wood here in the back. Really like the older Van Dorn reeds. And I don't know that for a certitude, but it makes sense to me, considering what I know about how difficult it makes to uh, it makes uh, balancing the reed when you've got way too much wood uh, back in that lower quarter of the reed. So there we go. Um, that takes a reed that really doesn't play at all, and in a very short order. And of course, as you know, uh, in a very short order, it's playing well. But as you know, when you guys start working on reeds, you're not going to be playing reeds and testing reeds that are this horrible. So the finishing technique is going to be, and the process is going to be a lot simpler. So uh, let's test this reed out. Let me uh, let me protect myself here. When playing unbalanced reeds, it's not good to endanger cutting your lips. And you can see I can make those slurs and I'm not uh, I'm not having to close my uh, my embouchure in order to like to slur up to the high note uh, everything just comes right out I'm going to lighten this whole thing just a little bit now we're going to try to blend the top into the third just very very lightly and uh, again we have ways to go on this reed but you can hear that we made dramatic process, a progress by this process. There we go. Let's see if I can get my phrases right. Um, and I'm just blending, blending this and smoothing it out. I'm not really, you know, I'm not really removing material as much as I am just lightly polishing. Let me get something even lighter. This is even lighter. We get a nice polished. And what we haven't done is we haven't really touched the center of the reed, the spine, the you know, the heart of the reed going down from the center. But we have significantly reduced the amount of wood in the corners there in the very back. Okay. When the reeds are balanced this way, it's so easy to play. And... There we go. Now you hear that's a reed that went from like 
being a zero to about, um, I'd say about 80, 89, 89, 88. You hear the right side is a little deader than the left. See, now we can balance these ears out, left side, right side, um, and still end up with a good amount of wood in this tip area that's not going to collapse uh, when you try to get it to be responsive. So I'm going to see if I can get uh, that uh, this right ear to ring more, again, with um, using one of the finishing techniques in the reed finishing system. And uh, I, again, all I did was uh, uh, thin the right side to try to get the rig to ring a little more and match, match the ringing on the left side. Normally, reeds are harder on the, on the left than the right, but this one um, was different. I don't know if you can hear that or not. I can certainly feel it and hear it, but the right corner still is not as responsive. So I'm going, again, I'm using lighter abrasive now. It's always good to have several finishing tools. So you have, uh, you know, aggressive abrasives um, and on one, and then you have a, you know, a gradation as you go up with maybe three or four different tools with uh, reeds in different states of aggression. Uh, an abrasion uh, on them because you don't want to be having to have the reed that's worn and then having to press a whole lot because that, that's really kind of counterproductive. Uh, you're always just wanting to take away hard spots, high spots, and um, increase the amount of energy that flows down the, the area that you're working on. What you're doing when you're removing material is you are reducing the resistance that will facilitate the energy flow in the ringing character. And as uh, going back to Harold Wright again, Wright has, has very simple ideas that are very effective when you apply them. And he says, the sound's always got to ring. It's got to be ringing. Okay, I'm going to do one tip finishing technique again it's in the in the book i think it's tip finishing technique number 5 but i'm going to get this right ear uh, to to ring a little better again i'm not pressing i'm just keeping a firm firm movement the the abrasive should be doing almost all the work um, and you have to gauge how aggressive you want the abrasive to be by how much material uh, you want to remove. There we go. Now we have, you know, we're getting closer in the ballpark with the ringing of the left and right. Look, working on reeds normally, not reeds that play as horribly as these did when we started out, is a much easier and much quicker uh, with this method. And uh, by the way, we are going to have a Christmas sale, and I have the Educator's Guide to the Clarinet, my fingering book, 
and the ATG read finishing system uh, as a package for the clarinet player in your life. Um, and it's going to be at a great price. Um, Ted hasn't told me what that's going to be because he sets the prices. Nobody trusts me to do that. I don't blame them. Uh, so uh, anyway, uh, the, the purpose here is, uh, is not to sell the refinishing system per se. The purpose here is to show you uh, the process that you need so that you have your reads that are going to respond properly and play well so that you can play efficiently whether it's single lip or double lip but especially double lip players you can't be having to chomp down and crunch on the reed in order to make it work because you're still biting you're just biting uh, in a painful state with both lips instead of one lip uh, and the solution is to properly balance your reeds to balance them side to side and balance them tip to back like I've showed you here and uh, the best way that you can do this really is just by practicing and, and getting an idea of yourself because uh, like anything else, reed finishing is a performance art and you only learn by actually doing so that you can gauge the process. It's like riding a bicycle. I can describe it, I can show you, but you have to get on the bicycle and ride yourself to finally get some idea of, uh, of the balance so that you don't fall over and look like an idiot. That's my story. I'm sticking to it.